Have you ever tried to deal with rust on an object only to see the rust return after a few months or a few years? The question is, can rust encapsulators or rust converters permanently stop the rust? Today we'll be testing eight different brands to see which brand is the best. We'll see which brand does the best job at preventing rust. Then we'll see which one does the best job protecting against rock chips. We'll see which one is the most scratch resistant. Then we'll see which one provides the best adhesion to metal. The least expensive product we'll be testing is definitely not a rust converter, but rather a spray paint, which we'll be using as a control. At only $4 for this 12 ounce can or 33 cents an ounce is this Rust-Oleum 2X. Rust-Oleum 2X claims to be both a paint as well as a primer. The Rust-Oleum 2X is made in USA. Remove loose paint and rust with the wire brush or sandpaper. The metal for the testing all came from the same old rusty frame. The instructions of several of the products warn against removing all rust since most of the products don't work without the presence of rust and will not work on bare metal. I cut out 27 pieces that are 5 inches in width. This allows for 3 test pieces for each product. We're just about ready to begin applying the products. The final step is to clean all of the test pieces with brake parts cleaner. Shake can vigorously for one minute after mixing ball begins to rattle. Shake can often during use. Hold can upright 10 to 16 inches from surface and spray in steady back and forth motion. Apply two or more light coats a few minutes apart. After a few minutes, I applied a second coat of Rust-Oleum 2X. At a price of only $5 for 10.25 ounces or 49 cents per ounce is this Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. Stops rust. Instantly converts rust. The Rust-Oleum is made in USA. Shake can vigorously for one minute after a ball begins to rattle. Keep the can in motion while spraying. The applied surface will turn black. One coat is sufficient. At a price of $17 for 32 ounces or 53 cents per ounce is this rust cutter. It claims to stop rust. We're going to test that. Rust cutter stops the oxidation process to prevent further rusting. The rust cutter is made in USA. Before using rust cutter, clean the area to be treated so that it is free from oils, grease, and grime. Remove any loose paint or rust with the wire brush or sandpaper. Do not grind to bare metal. Apply rust cutter to area and allow to dry. At a price of $10 for 10.25 ounces or 98 cents per ounce is this Permatex rust treatment. Destroys rust on contact. Assembled in USA with US or global components. Spray a thin coat on a rusted surface 8 to 10 inches away until surface is lightly or evenly coated. Apply 2 to 3 thin coats. Final application should dry to a black finish. I applied a second coat of Permatex about a minute after the first coat. At a price of $14 for 10.25 ounces or $1.37 per ounce is this VHT rust converter. Sandable for a smooth even finish. Ideal for rocker panels, paint blisters, and all metal surfaces. The VHT is made in USA. Prepare surface by removing loose paint, dirt, rust, grease, and wax. Remove as much rust scale as possible using 50 grit sandpaper or a wire brush. To spray, hold can parallel and 8 to 10 inches from surface to be coated and use an even sweeping motion. Apply two to three light coats. I applied a second coat of VHT about a minute after the first coat. At a price of $18 for 13 ounces or $1.38 per ounce is this Gempler's Aerosol Rust Converter. Chemically converts rust to an inert, protective barrier that can be painted over. The Gemplers is made in USA. Hold can 8 to 12 inches from surface and spray a thin coat onto the surface. After the surface is dried, apply a second thin coat. At a price of $16 for 8 ounces or $2 per ounce is this plastic coat rust converter. Transforms rust into a protected paintable surface. Remove loose rust and paint flakes using a wire brush or sanding. Apply rust converter directly to the rusted area and brush on evenly. At a price of $30 for 15 ounces or $2 per ounce is this Eastwood rust encapsulator. Apply directly over surface rust. Top coat with almost any paint or use as a top coat. Prevents rust from spreading. Ensure that surface is free from all loose rust, scale, and paint. Hold can 10 to 12 inches from surface and apply medium coat to ensure maximum adhesion overlapping surrounding paint by at least one and a quarter inches. The Eastwood is made in USA. After two hours, I applied a second coat of Eastwood Rust Encapsulator. And the most expensive product we'll be testing at $33 for 16 ounce or $2.06 per ounce is this POR15. Seals rust permanently. Professional use only. No need to remove rust before applying. We know what permanent means. POR15 is the only product that really stops rust permanently. POR15 drives to a rock-hard, non-porous finish that won't chip, crack, or peel. It prevents rust from recurring by protecting metal from further exposure to moisture. The POR15 is made in USA. After several hours, I applied a second coat of POR15. All the products have had 24 hours to cure, but I'm gonna allow several more days for each of the products to fully cure before exposing the test pieces to the elements. To avoid confusion, I went ahead and labeled each of the test pieces. It's been right at four days since I applied each of the products, so for one of the test panels on each brand, I'm gonna go ahead and use some Rust-Oleum 2X, apply two coats, and then we're gonna put each of these panels to the test. Since applying Rust-Oleum 2X to one third of the test panels, I've allowed the paint to cure for 72 hours. I'll apply a very aggressive rusting agent, which consists of hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, and salt. 
I'm also going to place the panels outside where they can be exposed to the elements. It's been right at 60 days since the testing began on these panels and there's already a huge difference between the brands. So let's take a closer look. All the panels were kept outside and exposed to the elements. In addition to exposure to the elements, only the top two panels experienced hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, and salt five different times. Here's how the rust cutter panel looked before exposure to the elements. Coming in ninth place is Rust Cutter. After only 60 days, there's quite a bit of rust that's formed on all of the panels. Even though the bottom panel did not experience any corrosive agents, you can see there's still some rust. The Gemplers provided a pretty nice finish before exposure to the elements. Finishing in eighth place is the Gemplers. Unfortunately, Gemplers experienced quite a bit of rust, especially on the two panels that experienced the hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, and salt exposure. And even the panel that did not experience the hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, and salt has quite a bit of rust on it. The appearance of the plastic coat looks very similar to the Gemplers. Barely finishing ahead of the Gemplers is the plastic coat. Unfortunately, the plastic coat also experienced quite a bit of rust, especially on the top two panels. The panel that was not exposed to hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, and salt still has some rust. VHT looks very similar to plastic coat in texture and overall appearance. Finishing in sixth place is the VHT. Unfortunately, all three panels experienced quite a bit of rust, especially the bottom panel, which did not experience exposure to hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, and salt. The Permatex seems to have a less glossy finish than most of the other products. Finishing in fifth place is the Permatex. The Permatex actually did quite a bit better than the other brands with regards to the top panel. However, the middle and lower panel did experience quite a bit of rust. The Rust-Oleum 2X has the most glossy appearance of all the products tested. I have to admit, I'm really surprised that the least expensive product beat five other brands. The Rust-Oleum 2X actually did fairly well. The top two panels were exposed to hydrogen peroxide, vinegar, and salt. And as you can see, there is quite a bit of rusting underneath the paint. The bottom panel, which was not exposed to the rusting agent, has very little oxidation. Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer has a very flat appearance. The Rust Reformer, as well as the Rust-Oleum 2X, nearly finished in a tie. The Rust-Oleum 2X definitely seems to have finished just behind the Rust Reformer, though, when you look at the amount of rust. The rust is definitely popping through on the top two panels. However, the bottom panel actually looks really good. The Eastwood looks nearly the same as the Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer. Coming in second place is the Eastwood Rust Encapsulator. Now the Eastwood did a very good job with just a very small amount of rust popping through on the top two panels. The encapsulator is peeling off a little bit at the bottom of the panel. That's probably more my fault because I probably did not apply a good enough coating near the edge of the metal. The PUR15 seems to be a thicker coating than the other brands and also has a glossy appearance. And finishing in first place is the POR15. It did a very impressive job with very little rust popping through the top two panels. Other than a small amount of paint fade, there's no visible signs of corrosion on the panel that was not exposed to the rusting agent. Trying to figure out which products did the best at blocking rust is fairly subjective, but the POR15 definitely seems to have done the best. Eastwood seems to have finished in second, Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer third, Rust-Oleum 2X fourth, and Permatex finished fifth. Let's see which coating provides the best protection against chipping in the next test using a 0.177 caliber steel ball that will be impacting the metal at around 200 miles per hour. At an ambient temperature of 75 degrees Fahrenheit or 24 degrees Celsius, the Rust-Oleum 2X experienced a 2.84 millimeter chip. The Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer chip was quite a bit larger at 4.18 millimeters compared to only 2.84 millimeters for the Rust-Oleum 2X. The damage area for the rust cutter was just about as large as the Rust Reformers at 3.74 millimeters. The Permatex did the best yet with the smallest amount of damage at only 2.8 millimeters. VHT did better than Permatex with a damaged area of only 2.2 millimeters. The Gemplers performed about the same as the Rust-Oleum 2X with a 2.98 millimeter chip. Plastic coat and Gemplers were nearly identical in size with a 2.91 millimeter damaged area. Eastwood had a slightly larger damaged area than average at 3.17 millimeters. While the Rust-Oleum top coat did chip, the PUR15 underneath the paint did not chip and there's no exposed metal. Very impressive. So the PUR15 came in on top without experiencing any metal exposure beneath the impact area. VHT finished second at 2.2 millimeters, Permatex 2.8, Rust-Oleum 2X 2.84, and Plastic Coat 2.91 millimeters. In the next test, we're going to measure the scratch resistance of each one of these brands. We have about 763 grams, or about 1.5 pounds, on the tip of the screw. We'll be using the panels that did not experience exposure to the rusting agent, beginning with Rust-Oleum 2X. Once the test piece is in place, I'll set the screw on top of the piece of metal and then drag it backwards across the panel. There's quite a bit of damage with the Rust-Oleum 2X, a lot of paint chipping along where the scratch occurred. 
The Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer actually did better than the Rust-Oleum 2X. It did go all the way down to the metal, but the paint did not chip. The Rust Reformer around the scratched area remained intact. Just like the Rust Reformer, the Rust Cutter also did about the same, did not fracture around the surrounding area of the scratch. Unfortunately, with the Permatex, there just didn't seem to be much of a coating to begin with, and unfortunately, the screw went all the way down to the metal. The VHT performed about the same as the Permatex. Just like the Permatex, the Gamplers performed about the same, with the screw going all the way down to the metal. The screw cut all the way through the plastic coat and down to the metal. However, the rust converter did not chip or fragment. The width of the scratch with the Eastwood definitely seems to be more narrow compared to some of the other brands. I have to admit, I'm really impressed with the POR15. While the screw did leave a scratch in the POR15, the POR15 did a great job and the screw was unable to cut all the way through it. Let's see how well each of the coatings perform when exposed to 2,450 PSI or 169 bars of water pressure. The panels being tested were not exposed to the rusting agent. The pressure washer nozzle is about 4 inches above the panels. The panels will pass under the pressure washer at nearly the same speed. 2,500 PSI is a lot of pressure and can cause damage to a car paint finish. Unfortunately, the pressure washer did a lot of damage to the Rust-Oleum 2X, removing most of the paint. Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer actually did a much better job than the Rust-Oleum 2X. There is a small area where the Rust Reformer did come off, but it did stay intact on most of the panel. It's pretty clear what happened to the rust cutter. Unfortunately, the pressure washer completely removed it from the panel. It's really hard to tell where the pressure washer passed across the Permatex because most of the surface looks as if there's nothing on it. With the VHT, the entire panel looks pretty rusty, so it's very hard to tell where the pressure washer passed across the panel. With the Gimplers, you can see where the pressure washer removed the product as well as knocked loose some of the rust. The plastic coat actually seems to have held up very well. Where the pressure washer passed over the product, it seems a little bit less faded. Eastwood actually did a very good job. There are three areas where a small amount of the Eastwood did come off the metal. The POR15 definitely did by far the best. No visible damage from the pressure washer. Trying to determine which products did the best job at surviving the pressure washer is fairly subjective, but the POR15 definitely seems to have done the best. Plastic Coat seems to have finished in second, Eastwood third, and Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer fourth. POR15 definitely seems by far the best product, but it's also by far the most expensive. I also like Eastwood quite a bit, but it too is pretty expensive. So if you're really concerned about the budget and depending on the project, Rust-Oleum Rust Reformer might be the best option. Rust-Oleum 2X, which is a very affordable paint primer combination, did a very respectable job when you consider the price. All the videos in this channel, including this one, are viewer suggested. So if you have a video idea, I hope you take time to leave a comment. Thanks so much for watching. Please take care and look forward to next time.